Good morning, Klinkos. I'd like to talk to you this morning uh, in two senses. One is the importance and the value, of course, of the Klinkos, but also how that blends with what we, as Fulcher Ireland, are trying to do in tourism. So it's a two-parter, and I hope by the end of it, it will have melded together. So I work within the investment and innovation. That's today's hot words for us. But basically, it's the infrastructure. It's the things that happen underneath the tourism industry. One side of Falter Ireland, and indeed Discover Ireland, is our website that gets the messages out there to the potential tourist. What happens when they get here is our business in the section I work with. Uh, I'd like to thank Michael John, because he's actually brought, on, brought up a very good point early on. It's the importance of programs and partnership um, working together between all the various state support agencies and your good selves working within the Clean Coasts groups. So maybe in terms of a team idea, we might have heard of Ireland's call. I'm making a call. We need, in Ireland, we need our tourism. We need tourism because it is where our foreign earnings come from the dollars, the pound sterling, the yen, wherever it's coming from. That's why tourism is really such a high priority for the whole state. We don't need just the money. We need a reputation. And I'll come around to this shortly. We need a reputation out there in the world for being, this is where I want to go. This is where I want to travel to. The reputation is twofold. It's our visitors are telling us through surveys, over 90% of them, the expectation is, when I get to Ireland, I'm going to be meeting great people, and it's a wonderful place, environmentally. It's a clean, it's an unspoilt environment. That's the perception. That's the belief that they have out there. Not alone do we need to have the incoming tourist and the reputation that supports that, we need more tourism. In this day and age, when tourists come, they're very quick to use social media to talk about their experience of what it's like being on holiday in Ireland. So really, to get that repeat business and the referral business and saying, we've just been to such and such a place, it was wonderful, you guys should come over. That's doing so much more than any publicity work we can do. In order to make that happen, Ireland needs your help. We don't have a fleet of vans driving around the country picking litter. It's just not practical. We really, really need the voluntary work, the community work, the on-the-ground work that you guys do so well. I'll come back to that. Just taking a, a, an overview piece on the tourist, and uh, we'll, we'll focus down on Wild Atlantic Way shortly, but the impressions that tourists come up with, they count. First of all, the impression of what is the attraction? Why are they coming here and not going to Iceland? are not going to South America, there has to be something here that attracts them. And that is the environment. And that is the people. It's that combination that says, this is a place I'd like to go. I'd like to see this. Having attracted them in the first place, and that's our publicity wing, and that's, that's what we do out there on the web, and that's what we do out there in our trade shows, that builds an anticipation. That builds for them an idea of when I get there, it's just going to be such a wonderful place before they've even arrived. Again, back to the social media. What, are, what messages are they getting from people they know who have been to Ireland? And then, of course, they get off the plane or drive off the ferry, and now they're starting to experience the dream and how real is it for them? Again, 
If their big dream is about the people and the place, what's the experience? And having done their experiencing being in Ireland on their holidays, they go back and they reflect. Will I do it again? Will I tell other people? What messages will I bring back? Specifically about the beaches and the coasts, they may have, sorry, that's a bit dull, they may have their own anticipation of what's this wonderful coastland, coastline of Ireland like? The dream beaches to go see do and be on, not just see, but be on, experience. And they don't have to be the Caribbean beaches with the palm trees and the hammocks. They're not expecting that. They're expecting a coast that is off the coast of Europe. As was uh, put to me one time by a gentleman from the Far East, ah, the other island, <laughs> which sort of puts us in context. Okay, so that's, that's the expectation. And hopefully we're trying to match that in experience. So how do we measure up? What is the, experience, the attraction? What is it that says to them, yeah, it's definitely worth coming here? It's more than just sitting in a car looking at the window at a beach. It's about experience. What can they see? What can they do? What can they feel if they do come over here? Three roles in there. There's the role of marketing, telling them about it before they get here, hopefully hooking them in. There's the role of development, which we can work with from ourselves, from other state agencies, from local authorities, from communities and businesses in the community. And then thirdly, there's the role of maintenance. You can build up something very well, but if it's left and neglected, it falls down. I have a couple of pictures to show. Please take them not as being reflective of any one place, but typical of what they may come across and how does this measure to their expectation. So we can have the beachheads. We can have the obvious litter. We can have the problems. We're aware of the problems. I know you're aware of the problems. But being responsible in our tourism is one of the big things that we're trying to get across to everybody is that responsible tourism is something that creates a better place. Back to the environment picture, that the place is better than it used to be and getting better all the time. Both for the people who live there and use that place from Ireland and the international visitor. Some of these things that we need to develop, the obvious ones, and again, I'm not pointing fingers, I'm just saying these are finding things. Yes, we have to go through the health and safety stuff. But what does that look like to a visitor? Please come and enjoy our beaches, but don't, 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 and never. <laughs> yes, it has to be there. We appreciate that. We understand that but maybe there's something in the design of that that could be done in a better way. Responsibly, but in a better way. Uh, another beauty, that actually is a signboard on the other side. <laughs> it's all about impressions. It's all about when you get out of the car, heading for that idyllic beach that you thought you were gonna visit, and you're walking from the car park and you're passing this, and you go, where am I going? Where am I heading for now? Maybe I should go back in the car and just try somewhere else. There's the pure infrastructure pieces. This is a lovely piece here we caught was, you can see the hollow concrete blocks, which are now used as excellent pieces of bins. <laughs> I know, I know, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of concrete blocks, and it is practically impossible to make sure there's not one piece of litter in one concrete block. But that's where the value to Irish tourism of clean coast comes in. 
that's where the beach picks, the cleaning, comes in. The local authorities can't do it. They just don't have the resources to have vans out there either. They can only do what they can do with the budgets they have. But the community is the, the place where the help comes from. Ireland's call again. Okay, that's, that's the bigger picture. That's what's the importance of clean coasts. I'd like to just focus a little bit on one particular program that Fault Charlotte's involved with. And this is about identifying which customers fit which attractions. For the Wild Atlantic Way, and wilder today, sorry Michael John, got back on that one. <laughs> it's even wilder last night. We've been looking at four particular segments or types of visitor. There's the people who experience driving. They want to do a nice long drive. The value of the Wild Atlantic Way says you can get a very scenic route of maybe 15 kilometers somewhere in the hills. But are you really going to drive from Dortmund to do a 15 mile trip? No. So the whole idea of the Wild Atlantic Way is it's big enough to say this might be worth doing. This might be worth taking that longer trip to Ireland. And we'll come to the, some of the, the figures later, but you actually won't be able to do the Wild Atlantic Way all in one go. It just takes too long. So that's one type. There's those who want to experience being out in that environment, that unspoiled environment that they have in their minds. There's the ones who want to share with us who we are as Irish people. And there's those who want to get out there and build up a sweat and run on the beach or go horse riding or climb the cliffs and talk in pure coastal or do the windsurfing, the activities. So let's look at what is this wild Atlantic way and what's behind it. It is about all of the things I've spoken about so far and it's about developing something that respects the west coast of Ireland as an environment and as a good place to visit. Hopefully this video will work. Did we just, what was the suggestion on the sound? This one? Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, this is just a promotional piece on the Wild Atlantic Way. It's the actual promotional video. Let's see if it happens. If it doesn't, we can skip. In their 
independence born of the land and sea. This is a journey to and through the Ireland you imagined. This is the wild, magnificent Ireland of your dreams. This is the way to a trip of a lifetime. This is the Wild Atlantic Way. journey that will stay with you forever. Okay, apologies if the sound was a little bit light, but imagine yourselves as being residents in Kansas. Does this grab you? Does this say, hmm, like the look of that? That's the whole idea. That's the building of that expectation. That's the building of the imagination. It's carefully written in, of course, all these advertising people are very clever about what they say, but it builds in there the idea. Ah, this is what I want. So that gets, hopefully, the attraction. So in order to make it happen, we needed to have that headline, we needed to have that big picture thing. This, you won't get longer, you won't get better. This is the one. If you want to do, see the coast, this is the one to do. The motivators, all the things that pull in behind that, get the juices in their brains flowing. Intriguing. 2,500 kilometers, magnificent. Whoa, this is more than I thought. This isn't just a, a, a little two-bit, nice scenic drive. This is big. And because it's big, for us, it means repeat business. It means they don't just come once. They'd probably be maybe able to do 200, 300 kilometers. Even that's a quite a distance. If they like it, we hope they come back for more and bring their friends. Now, that supports not just us individually, but it supports Irish tourism businesses. We looked at what else is out there, what are the comp competitors, what do they do? They're not a patch on us, actually. And the whole idea of Wild Atlantic Way, it's a development. Again, coming back to sustainable development, it's something that makes it better for both the people who live there and the people who come visit. It's a scale, it's a special. It's about the West Coast particularly because the West Coast had problems economically. Tourism was centered around Dublin and the Eastern region and the West Coast were saying, well, what about us? So this is in response to that. So the map there, it's all on the coast. Plenty to see and do. You can get somewhere to stay. There's lots of things to see, there's lots of things to do. There's festivals, there's events, there's trails that you can use, looped walks, the blue flag beaches, of course, and the golf courses. Now, I'm not saying that this doesn't matter to anybody else who's not on the Wild Atlantic Way. That's just as important, but just for the focus of what's Wild Atlantic Way about. That's where we're coming from. So the route itself, well, one thing that really was necessary and is complete by now is signage, so they've some idea what road to take and what road not to take. <laughs> we had to go out and get the engineers to look at this and say, you know, what happens if somebody is towing quite a big caravan? Which roads could they use and which roads <coughs> should they avoid? So that's where the signage plan came in. And when you consider that on the route that we've designed, there's 980 junctions that's options to go left, right, or ahead. That was quite a piece of signage work required to make sure that everybody didn't get lost. We have discovery points. These are sort of the high value ones, the high feature ones. These are the must-dos. 
And again, because they're spread from north to south, all the way down the coast, they're probably not going to catch them all in one go. This requires community. We can't do it. Any government agency, I suggest, couldn't do it. Directly in the departments of the government, we couldn't do it. Directly in the local authorities, we couldn't do it. It's too big. It requires everybody pulling together on this. And that is where the Clean Coasts program has the highest value. Because you're the guys who are actually out there picking up, cleaning the beaches, making sure that it's presentable and leaves a good experience for the visitor. So just about done. We'd like you to keep in touch with us through our website, which is wildatlanticway.ie, and give us any good ideas that you may have. You're the ones closest to the particular beach, the particular place. You might be able to feed some very good ideas. We can't be experts in every beach. We don't know them well enough, but you do. You can be project ambassadors. The fact that you're out there, you're showing these are the people that the visitors want to talk with, the real Irish people who live and work in that area. And you can influence your communities. You can be out there saying, we've been down there, we've seen this, there is this problem, maybe you guys up there could do something about this, if you saw the reason for it. So that's just about it from me, but uh, just to finish off by saying thank you very much for your help. I really appreciate it.